In the previous video, we had a look at all the properties of quadrilaterals. Now let's go and have a look at how we can use these properties in calculations. Example 1. ABCD is a rectangle with AC equal to 50 centimeters, that is the diagonal, and angle A1, 70 degrees. The first question, determine the size of angle A2. When the type of quadrilateral is given in a question, that is always your starting point. Here we are given that this is a rectangle and that means we have many properties that we can use. Firstly, we know that the pairs of opposite sides are equal and these same sides are also parallel. And when there are parallel lines, you need to remember that you may use your alternate corresponding and co-interior angles if needed. We also know that the angles of a rectangle are all 90 degrees and we know that the diagonals are equal in length and bisect each other which means that the parts of the diagonals are all the same length. For our first question to determine the size of angle A2 we already know that angle A1 which is 70 and angle A2 together should equal 90 degrees, which means that angle A2 should be 20 degrees. Remember to always supply a reason for any statement that you make in geometry, and in this case that will be angles of a rectangle. Question B. Determine the length of DE. We already know that the lengths of the diagonals are equal, so line AC which is 50 centimeters, will be the same size as DB, which will then also be 50 centimeters. We also know that the diagonals bisect each other. So diagonal DB is divided into two equal parts. That means that DE is the same length as EB, and therefore we know that DE should be half of 50, and that is 25 centimeters. And our reason will be that the diagonals bisect each other. Question C. Determine the size of angle D1. We just mentioned that the diagonals of a rectangle are equal and bisect each other, and therefore we can accept that AE is also the same length as DE, and now we have an isosceles triangle. This means that angle A1 is the same size as angle D1. So we start off by saying that AE is the same length as DE and we've given the reasons in B already. So angle D1 is the same as angle A1 which is 70 degrees because they are angles opposite equal sides. Next up we need to determine the size of angle C2. For this, you need to remember that the pairs of opposite sides are parallel and therefore we can make use of alternate angles to say that angle C2 is the same size as angle A1. So we started off saying that AD is parallel to BC because they are opposite sides of our rectangle and then we made the conclusion that C2 is also 70 degrees because of the alternate angles. Example 2. FGHI is a square with angle J1 equal to 52 degrees. Determine the size of K1. Having a look at the sketch, you will see that angle J1, the given angle, and the angle we need to determine, K1, form part of the same triangle. Therefore, we simply need to determine the size of F2 to use interior angles of a triangle. Luckily, we know that the 90 degree angle of a square is bisected by the diagonal to form 45 degree angles. So we can start off by saying that the whole of angle F, so angle F1 and angle F2, should equal 90 degrees because of the angles of a square. We also know that angle F2 
should be the same size as F1 and therefore 45 degrees because the diagonals bisect the angles. Now we know that angle K1, which we want to determine, plus the 45 degrees of angle F2 and the 52 degrees of angle J1 should add up to 180 degrees because of the interior angles of a triangle. So now we can calculate the size of angle K1 by taking the 180 and subtracting the 45 degrees as well as the 52 degrees. So K1 is equal to 83 degrees. Out of these examples, you should realize how important it is to know all the properties of the quadrilaterals by heart so that you can identify which ones will be helpful in your specific question.